السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم um, إن شاء الله we'll continue with Spark at least for this lecture maybe maybe not next lecture but at least for this lecture um, we will um, talk about streaming so far we did batch processing right we um, studied Hadoop or MapReduce I think uh, extensively and then we had two lectures on Spark and both are uh, de facto batch processing engines uh, in the uh, domain of big data analytics. Uh, today, inshallah, we'll start talking about uh, stream processing. We'll have um, two parts. The session has two parts. First, introduction to stream processing. What do we mean by streams and what do we mean by stream processing? And then we'll talk about uh, streaming in the domain of Spark. Okay, we'll start talking about data streams. So what is a data stream? Any idea? It's a, it's a stream of data. <laughs> data that is coming uh, in real time. Okay, what else? Continuously, okay. Is there any order? Yes, they, they, they come in order, right? It depends on what you mean by continuous. Continuous doesn't mean that it's always there, but it is unbounded, and it doesn't have an end. We might, so that's a good point. We might get some data now, maybe for five minutes there will be no data, and then it will continue. That, that's what we mean by continuous. Continuous doesn't mean that it's always... Uh, it's always active. Okay, what well, this is the meaning of it. Okay, so I think we capture it. It's a sequence of items. It is structured. Okay, it is ordered either implicitly by the time of arrival or by time stamps that might not be exactly the order of the arrival for many reasons. Okay, uh, this is but might be coming uh, through networks and there, are my, there might be some delays, okay? So you need to keep that in mind in general that the time that the data was generated is not, or the order that the data was generated with is not exactly the order that you will see uh, in the stream, okay? Uh, it arrives continuously at high volumes. Um, it's not possible to store entirely uh, simply because it's unbounded. So we cannot really store everything. Um, and sometimes even it's not possible to examine all items if they are coming with a very high speed that is much higher than the speed of processing, you might miss some, some data. Okay? So that's what we mean by a data stream. And just to, to, uh, to make sure that it doesn't uh, conflict with what we always hear about streaming, it doesn't always have to be audio or video, okay? it's, that's something, uh, something else uh, that when you see the, the on-demand video streaming or audio streaming, but uh, it can have, of course, structure and semantics, it doesn't have to be video uh, or audio. Um, here's a definition by Golab and Ozo in 2003. A data stream is a real-time, continuous, ordered, implicitly by arrival time or, in, or implicitly by timestamp, sequence of items. It is impossible to control the order in which items arrive. It is impossible to control the order. Why is that? Because it's coming from external source to us. We don't control that external source that provides the stream. Okay, we control once the data is in our system. Okay, but that the stream itself, we don't, con we cannot control the order that is coming, okay? Um, no, it is feasible to locally store a stream in its entirety, okay? If the stream will continuously uh, uh, come, so it's, it's not feasible to, to store it forever, okay? What to do with data streams? Usually we have one of two things. Either to detect something, some events, and react to them when they happen in the stream, and or we do online aggregation. We do some computation, some statistics, some aggregations out of the data, that uh, some analytics that we will 
keep doing over time. Okay? So these are the potential objectives of processing these streams. And of course, that has to be done online. Why is that? Because it's continuous, right? If I cannot do it offline. If, if I do it offline, then I will miss so many uh, um, part, so large part of, of the stream. Okay, so I have to do it online. I have to do it in real time or near real time as we will uh, discuss. Various applications. What kind of applications do you think can be uh, stream processing? Any examples? Logs. Yeah, uh, processing logs. Coming from what logs? From various sources. Like? Uh, Yeah. So the, all of this log information can be a stream and it's continuous because the network is running over all the time. Huge amount of data. Okay. That's one application. What else? Recommendations of what? Are you talking about video streaming now? Or? Okay, forget about video streaming, please. Okay. It's, it's, it's something else. Video streaming is not what we mean here. It's not... A, Ah, ah, okay, okay. Uh, ratings, you mean? Ratings of, of videos. Ah, okay, okay. It's not the, the, the watching the video itself. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes, yes. Ratings. Okay, ratings is, is a stream. You get uh, user ratings for so many items, so many videos or movies or uh, whatever, and you, you get them in a stream and you want to do something with them. Social media analysis. That's another thing, right? Yeah, what kind of social media analysis we can have? Uh, yes, the, the statistics about your, uh, the interactions of people with your tweets. Okay. Um, yes, and, and, and you need that to be up to date, right? As much as you can. Uh, so you have to do it uh, in real time. Okay. What else? Any, any ideas, uh, Anina? Reading from sensors, Doctor. Adi? Reading from sensors. You need what? No, reading from the sensors. Sensor. Ah, sensor networks. Yes. 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 Yeah, that's that's lots of data. Okay? Yes. Uh, you get the measurements from many sensors and you need to do also something useful out of them. Yes. Bank transactions are streams. Yes. Yes. Huh? Weather. What kind of data will, will come in the stream from the weather? Ah, it's, it's kind of sensors, yes. It's kind of sensors. Okay. Uh, in transactions, what do we do with transactions? We can find the frauds, right? Fraud detection is, is one of the key uh, applications <coughs> in stream processing. You mean the bots? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. So lots of, of applications. Do you have any? Uh, okay. Right. Network traffic monitoring. We said it. Sensor networks. We said it. Um, facilities monitoring. Okay. Images from the from the cameras that we have. Different cameras or vi different videos, actually. Uh, that that's kind of streaming. What's that? Um, is that streaming? But but the the act itself will be on specific image. Uh, if unless you want to track it. Ah ah, you mean yeah 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 yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, you get all the images yeah. and the video, actually. Yeah, you okay. the, the, the the yes, you're right. You're right. Yes, yes. I think we covered almost everything here. Okay. So, so many uh, applications are actually depending on uh, stream uh, processing. What's the scale? This is just an example, just to show you the scale. And that's actually a few years ago. 
So single two gigabyte per second link. So that's a network link. Um, and the example here is to, to check the size of the packet data streams. And that's the, the one that you started with. So the average, let's say that the average packet size is 50 bytes. That will give us 5 million packet per second. 5 million packet per second. Okay, so the time per second per packet will be 0.2 microseconds. Now, this is this is the number of packets. That's the size, the volume of back packets that, that are on, on that link, one link. Okay, let's say that I want to process only part of that packet, only the maybe the header of the packet, which is like 10 bytes out of the 50. So that's 50 million, 50 megabytes per second. You need to process if you just process the part of the header. If you collect it per day, that will be more than four terabytes per day. And that's one link only, just to give you an idea of how much uh, data will be. So what if you wanted to do deep back inspection with, with more size, of course, that, that would be even larger. Now, what is the common architecture to deal with, uh, with, stream, with data streams? You get data streams, you can work on uh, um, multiple data streams at the same time. Okay. Um, so usually we, uh, we use what we call data stream management systems. And this, this is what we will actually uh, talk about. Uh, this is getting the stream as an input and provides some output from that stream. Usually that output is processed offline by DBMS, database management systems, okay, or stored. So the idea here is that stream is huge, it's continuous. We want to get a summary of it, that's in general, so that we can work on it offline. Okay, so that's the, um, the, the main architecture. And here we, we say that we have queries. These queries actually determines what we will get out of the stream. Okay, depending on, on, on the application. These are the, the criteria by which we will uh, provide what we call here data feeds. So this is data streams, this is, these are called data feeds that will be stored in the, in the, uh, in the database. Okay, so the main idea is, is clear. So we have a stream that is continuously coming. We cannot deal with that stream, we cannot process, um, we cannot immediately get uh, something out of the stream. So we have to do some processing uh, uh, on it to provide maybe, um, uh, you can think of it a compressed version of the data or a summary version of the data based on the application that we are doing. And then we can do our work on batches of this data. Okay, that's the general idea. Yes. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, it's a storage. The, the idea is that it will be stored so that it can be processed uh, further if you like. Okay, questions? You have a question? Why? It depends on the application. So generally, you need to store, but eventually you need to store something because that's coming all the time. So whatever you capture from the stream, you need to store it somewhere. Okay, so that's the idea here of DBMS or storage in general. So you have to store something that you detect it or the aggregations that you will, that you will get. On the stream, yes, exactly. That's the idea. Yes, and that's exactly why we have here the queries. Queries will determine what we will get out of the stream, what we'll capture from the stream. Okay. Yeah. For example, the simplest example that is usually uh, used here: I want to analyze errors in uh, uh, in the stream in the in the log file of of the network. Okay. So I need first to capture the errors out of this huge log, okay? 
And then once, once I capture that error, the, the, the errors, I will do analysis on them. Okay? Uh, so this is something that, that we will detect first. So the query is like a filter that will get the uh, error messages out of the log. And then I can do analysis on them. Right. Any questions on that? Okay. Like what, what makes it hard? There are challenges, challenge, uh, challenges with this. Intrinsic challenges about data streams itself, the volume, huge, velocity might be really uh, very fast. Storage is limited. Whatever storage we have will not be, uh, will, will, might, might not be enough to store unbounded stream. Okay? Uh, and there, there is also sometimes strict latency requirements. You need to, you, you have some latency uh, requirements in your application, something like you need to be, um, to process or to get up, up to date statistics every second or every 10 seconds or every even, even half second. Okay, it depends of course on the, uh, on the requirements of the application. So you, you might have strict latency requirements that will be challenging to realize. There are also system challenges. Um, the data might come in bursts, might not be balanced across the, uh, the, uh, the input nodes. The messages might not be reliably delivered. Sometimes you might get images out of order. Uh, sorry, not images, uh, I mean messages out of orders, out of order. Okay, so if you compare the actual time, uh, for example, tweets, it might happen that you get tweets out of order, of course. Okay, um, the timestamp of the tweets might not be exactly the order uh, uh, or the criteria by which the, the tweets are ordered in terms of delivery. Okay, for tolerance, what happens if some of the nodes will fail? What happens to the stream? Will you lose it completely or you have other, uh, other uh, options? Um, will you allow losing some of the data? This is what we mean by consistency semantics. Will the processing be lossy? Or it will, it will guarantee that every single element or item in the data will be exactly processed once, as we will see in Spark streaming, or at least once, as we will see in Storm. So these are different uh, consistency uh, semantics that, that we will uh, we will face. Okay. Um, what do we do with the streams? There are some standard relation operations like what we do usually in, in databases. Okay. Uh, like select, project, group by, join, um, any aggregations. Um, transform here means you can apply your customized user-defined function. You can do any, anything that you want. Okay. So these are typical relational operations. But you can also do complex operations. Okay. So if you think about issues with this, let's think about some of the uh, operations, of these operations, and see what, uh, what possible issues we can have. Let's think about group by. You want to do group by and do aggregation. Okay, we, we know in, in, when we have a database, it's straightforward, right? You group by some specific key and then you aggregate the values of that key. Okay, you do some on another column or something. Now, think about it. Not now that we have a database batch data. Now we have a stream. How can we do this group by? When do you stop grouping, Aslan? Okay, any. When will you stop grouping? The data is coming continuously. Okay. When you will stop grouping and start aggregating, because here there are two things, right? You group and then aggregate. So you have to finish grouping first before you do the aggregation. It depends on the, the way that you do the aggregation, but, um, but, but you have to, to say that this is the final answer, right? When do you stop aggregating? When, 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 because whenever you stop, you will get an answer for that part of the data. 
Okay, so that's something that uh, that we need to uh, to think about. If you do joining, there are two um, uh, ways to do joining. You join a stream with a static source, so something that's a static, you want to join it with the coming data. So that's that's easy. That's not uh, there's no issue here. It will be just simple lookup from the static source. Okay, but what if you want to join two streams? That you might actually have in your project, maybe Fatma. I don't know Reem, if you will see it. I think you will. Yeah, you. It's also it's here. The issue is of synchronization. Okay, when can you say that? Halas, I'm done. I, yeah, I can join now. Uh, that's not windowing is the solution here. Okay, you have to have windows. Okay, so that's the solution actually. But these are the issues that uh, that are inherent in uh, uh, in um, in uh, processing data streams. Same here when when we do group by and aggregation joining two streams. Same issue. So the solution, as you said, Windows. So what do you mean by Windows, Fatma? Microsoft Windows. <laughs> Yes, so you, are, you have to process the data in Windows, okay, in, in a window of time, okay? So this is a mechanism, of, uh, mechanism for extracting relations from an infinite stream. So you will divide the stream into smaller batches. The window is like a batch, right? So instead of thinking of the stream as something that is always uh, uh, changing, you say that I, w I will only focus on batches of that stream, which we call them here windows, okay? Um, so now, if we look at the stream as a stream of windows or as, as windows, each window, I can do the processing on that, on that window. So the windows will restrict processing scope. Okay, whenever I say join, I will join across these windows. Whenever I do group by or aggregating, I will aggregate based on, on these windows. So I can do windows based on, there are many ways to do, to define windows. One of them is time. So I can say every uh, one minute, the data that will come every one, every one minute is a window, is my window. Or I can do it on counts. I can say, uh, every uh, hundred uh, uh, tweets or every uh, one thousand tweets will be my window. Or I can do it on explicit markers. We call them punctuations here. And whenever I see some specific value, I consider that that's the end of the window. Okay. Example. Um, hmm. I might get um, let's say transactions from the bank. Okay. Maybe in, will be inserted in the stream um, a, a special value of the transaction. Um, uh, okay. Let me try to. Uh, Special value for maybe the the, uh, the machine that says that uh, maybe this is the last transaction for the machine and the machine would be, uh, uh, but that's not that's not very uh, very realistic. Let me think of one, another one, and you can help me also. Um, uh, yes, based on markers. Yeah, it might be, uh, for example, a special value of, of a tweet. Maybe I will stop every eight weeks. For some reason, of course, it depends on the application. Okay, I will. The, my window will be tweets unle, until I get a retweet. Processing what? What is that? Ah, ah, okay, bank transactions. Transfer. 
it's it's something that yeah it is something that is defined by the application itself and i'm just tracking it so and and that will define the window for me this screen something yeah yeah it, it depends on the application something that will be inserted by the application by the source uh, and i have to know that and i have to know from the source that this is the marker that i am looking at and that hmm? it, it, it should be defined of course yes okay and can be variance can be some semantic partition constraint and yeah, for example i can uh, uh, i can uh, i can say uh, the window uh, I will determine the window not by a marker, but uh, if if I got um, um, a burst of, of tweets and then uh, silence time, then I will take this as as my window. Whenever I, I whatever I define by as a silence time, okay, I will consider whatever I got so far as a window. Okay? So these are different types. Of course, not all of them supported by the streaming systems. Okay, so here, let's, let's take at least the, the, the common ones. The first one is the ordering, uh, windows on ordering attributes, like time. So if this is the time, so I can say I will um, have like, uh, let's say that this is 10, 10 minutes. So my window is 10 minutes. So there are two types of windows, sliding window and tumbling windows, window. Sliding window, I shift the window, okay, with some interval every time. So here, for example, let's say that this is one minute. So here, let's say that this is the size of this is 10 minutes, and the sliding window will shift every one minute. So this is the, this is the first window, this is the second one, that's the third one, and so on. With sliding window, of course, there is overlap, because I, I shift every um, every one interval time why why do we do that yeah can you can you think of one example yeah, in in case for of, of twitter for example i want to update my statistics based on the last hour so my window is the last hour but I need to update that every minute. Okay? So the window size will be one hour, which will consider all the data that happened in the last hour, and I will update that every minute. So I will slide, I will shift the window by one minute, but it, the, always the window will cover the last hour. Okay? Is that clear? You are always thinking about hashtags. Um, <laughs> and that's our work. <laughs> uh, updating the trending hashtags, yes, should be very, uh, maybe not every one minute. I don't know. I don't know what, what Twitter is doing, but yes, yes. Um, something like this, yes. You mean the, the, the top hashtags that we, that we see that should be, yeah, should be very frequently updated, of course. Otherwise, it would be obsolete. When you click on something, you'll see that it's, it's not, no longer uh, being used. Okay? Tumbling windows are completely uh, separate. I mean, they, they don't overlap. So there are some applications that doesn't need to slide. Yes. Yes. I, I don't need to really be updated every... Uh, I mean, I'm... I'm the window is one hour and I need to update it every hour. I don't care about updating it less than that. Okay. I can also have windows on counts. Uh, in this case, the window size of will be n elements. Okay. In that case, the size of the window in terms of time will be uh, uh, will vary. Right. So I might get the Let's say n is 100, I might get 100 elements here, and I might get 100 elements here, okay? I might get 100 elements here, and, and so on, okay? Uh, again, the, the sliding here will be in terms of elements, not, not time, okay? 
Is that clear? So the challenge here, of course, is that the, the window size is unpredictable. You cannot predict window size and thus might, that might affect your processing. Uh, the third one, windows from punctuations. Um, as we said earlier, application inserted end of processing. Uh, this is the example of that uh, stream of actions with end of user session. And he, if the user, for example, and, and we, saw, we, we see that all the time, when we search, we type one query, we get some results, maybe we change the query, okay, and then change the query a bit, and then maybe we write another query, but probably related to the, the previous ones, and then we pause, and we don't write more, okay? That's an end of session. So that's, that's like um, uh, a punctuation here. So that will be the end of session of that user. Okay. Um, advantage, the application control the, the semantics of, of the window. But this advantage, again, it's the window size is unpredictable. You cannot, you cannot know how, what the size of the window will be in terms of time. It can be too large or, or too small. Okay. Uh, I think we covered that already. So applications will identify ev events, uh, take response action, responsive actions. Um, we can also uh, uh, capture correlations in a stream and reconfigure the system. Um, another example from Google wants to know what queries are more frequent today. This is something like hashtag trending, but this is for queries um, that are more frequent today than yesterday. Mining click streams. So for example, QU wants to know which of its pages are getting an, an unusual number of hits in the past hour, if that's of benefit, of course, okay, for example. Uh, Big Brother applications. Who is doing what? <laughs> okay. Who calls whom? Who access which web pages? Who buys what where? Okay. Things to just monitor what, what is going on in terms of transactions of users. So many applications. Any questions so far? Okay, quick idea of the architecture, just maybe a couple of slides, just to, to think about what will be in the processing system. So we have input data streams. They might be more than one stream. Does it have to be always one stream? It can be uh, multiple streams in parallel. And then you do processing. Okay, we call these operator boxes. You can do any processing in, in each of these uh, uh, in each of these boxes. Okay? Eventually, you might need to store some some data as we mentioned earlier, and there are queries, and then there will be output to the applications, whether stored or directly uh, delivered to the application to the, the actual application that uh, that will provide decisions based on this uh, based on this data. Um, as you see here, it doesn't have to be just linear pipeline. It depends on what, what you are doing. Okay. And as you also see here, the queries, you might have multiple queries in here. Um, and, and, and these queries might be actually ad hoc, which means that it can, it can change over time. Doesn't have to be standing query. And you might get these queries from the users. They are processed in real time. On, what do you mean by impact? Ah, these queries? Yes, these queries they will, will run in, in parallel. It depends on the setup, yani. You, you might get you might, you can provide, of course, uh, processing multiple queries in parallel. Yeah. No, here, of course. Windows will pro will provide a mechanism for these boxes to process your data.
what do you mean by what about it? I don't understand what do you mean. Yes. Um, usually this is this is this would be a feed. This is something that will not be as um, as huge as the stream itself. It has to be a, a smaller version so that the application can easily process it. As we as we saw in, in previously. Language? Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah, you, you, here, this, bam, the actual thing that you want to do. It depends on what, what you would do with this. Why, why are you separating English from. You mean here in the application? We don't know what the application will do with that. Ah, okay, I got your point. What do you mean by we here? Yes, of course, you will have to process this, but, but of course, you build that system knowing what the application is, the needs of the application. Yes, you will, you will build that, or we, we, we should build that, yes. Uh, good point. Good point. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I should do something with, with the output of the stream. Yes. Otherwise, it will be useless, right? Data is, is stored, uh, and then what? Yeah, what? <laughs> ah, well, this is the beauty of Spark. That's the beauty of Spark, that that you can integrate streaming, uh, uh, stream processing, and batch processing together. You don't need to leave that, store the data in, in, in your storage, and then process it with another framework. You can do everything with Spark. That's that's one of them. Huh? To my knowledge, to my knowledge, yes, so far. Spark provides, no, I mean, let me, let me uh, take it back. Um, there are other frameworks like Flink that does both uh, um, stream processing and batch processing integrated, but Spark also provides other libraries. I'm not ad any advertiser for Spark, but it does. It has other libraries that will make your life easier, like Spark SQL, Spark ML, uh, I mean ML library, uh, graphics, and, and, and so on. So you can do things within the same framework, um, unless there is something that you want to, that, that, that is needed, that is not in Spark, you have, of course, to, to move your data to another thing. We didn't talk about Spark streaming yet, by the way. Yes. Um, I think Spark is is widely used now. One of them, but it's not the only one yet. But it is widely used, of course. Yes. Yes. Hmm. Any other questions? Here's a specific example. Uh, we don't have to I need to understand everything here. I really don't know exactly the application, but the idea is that we are uh, getting some uh, um, uh, input. We are doing some aggregations, joining, and then we write the results uh, to, uh, to a database so that it can be used by by the application. Okay. So you can design your system based, of course, on uh, on what you need to get out of the stream. Any questions? So that is this is very quick introduction to data streams. I hope that now you understand what is the difference between batch processing and stream processing, which is really completely different. Different uh, objectives, different way of processing. <laughs>